Hey everyone welcome back to our channel The Auto Vault. What if I told you a brilliant Mexican engineer discovered VW's own secret performance parts hiding in plain sight, then used them to build naturally aspirated Beetle engines making 200 horsepower when Volkswagen themselves said it was impossible. This is the story of how one man outsmarted one of the world's biggest car companies using their own forgotten technology. You know there's something absolutely magical about the automotive underground isn't there? While the big manufacturers are busy telling us what's possible and what isn't, there are always these brilliant minds working in garages and workshops around the world, proving that the rulebook was meant to be rewritten. Today I want to tell you about one of the most fascinating stories I've come across in years, and trust me, this one's going to blow your mind. We're talking about a Mexican engineer who managed to extract 200 horsepower from a Volkswagen Beetle engine. Naturally aspirated, no turbochargers, no superchargers, just pure engineering genius and a deep understanding of what Volkswagen themselves had forgotten about their own engines. Before we dive deep into this incredible story, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell because we're always bringing you stories like this, tales of engineering brilliance, automotive passion, and the people who refuse to accept limitations. Seriously, if you love cars and the culture around them, you're going to want to stick around for what we've got coming. So let's set the scene here. We're talking about the Volkswagen air-cooled flat-4 engine, that iconic power plant that powered millions of Beatles, buses, and Carmen Ghias over decades of production. When most people think of these engines, they think reliable, economical, maybe a bit underpowered. The standard Beetle came with what maybe 40 horsepower in its early days, eventually working its way up to about 60 horses in the later models, not exactly setting the world on fire, right? But here's where it gets interesting. There was this engineer in Mexico, and I wish I could tell you I knew his full story from the beginning, but like many true gearhead legends, some of the details have become part of automotive folklore, passed down through enthusiast circles and race paddocks. What we do know is that this guy wasn't content with the conventional wisdom surrounding the VW engine. He started asking questions that nobody else was asking. Why did Volkswagen design certain components the way they did? What were the original engineering tolerances? And most importantly, what was hiding in Volkswagen's own parts catalog that nobody was paying attention to? The beautiful thing about Volkswagen's production system, especially in Mexico, is that the company kept producing the Beetle long after it had been discontinued in most other markets. Mexico's love affair with the Beetle, or Vacho as it's affectionately known there, meant that production continued until 2003. That's decades longer than most other countries, and during that time, Volkswagen's Mexican operations had access to an absolutely massive catalog of parts, spanning different eras of production, different market requirements, and different performance applications. Our engineer friend started digging through this catalog, and he noticed something fascinating. Volkswagen had produced various versions of their air-cooled engine for different applications over the years. There were industrial versions, versions for the Type 2 bus that needed more low and torque, versions for the Carmen Ghia, and even some performance-oriented parts that were available for certain markets or specific applications. Most people just looked at these as replacement parts, but our engineer saw something else entirely. He saw a puzzle where the pieces had been scattered across decades of production, waiting for someone smart enough to put them together. Now let's talk about what makes an air-cooled VW engine tick, because understanding this is crucial to appreciating what this engineer accomplished. The basic architecture is a horizontally opposed four-cylinder engine, air-cooled, with the cylinders jutting out into the airstream to dissipate heat. Each cylinder is actually a separate barrel that fits into the crankcase, with a separate cylinder head bolted on top. This modular design was brilliant for manufacturing and maintenance, but it also meant that, theoretically, you could mix and match components if you knew what you were doing. The engine breathes through a relatively simple intake system in stock form, usually a single carburetor or sometimes dual carburetors on later models, feeding air and fuel into the cylinders. The exhaust exits through pretty restrictive stock manifolds designed more for quiet operation than performance. The ignition system was basic but reliable, using a distributor and points in the early days, later moving to electronic ignition. And the whole thing was cooled by a belt-driven fan that forced air across the cylinder fins and through a shroud system. Here's the thing though, Volkswagen's engineers weren't stupid. They designed this engine with certain capabilities in mind, certain stress tolerances, certain flow characteristics that could handle more than what the stock configuration demanded. They had to because they needed reliability margins, they needed the engine to work in different altitudes, different climates, different loading conditions. 
What our Mexican engineer realized was that the engine's basic architecture could support significantly more power than what VW was extracting from it in standard beetle form. So he started his research, and this is where it gets really cool. He discovered that Volkswagen had produced what's known as the 44-cylinder head. Now, to most people, this was just another cylinder head in the parts catalog, but to someone who understood engine breathing, these heads were special. They featured larger ports, better flow characteristics, and valves that were sized differently than the standard Beetle heads. These weren't secret racing parts, they weren't hidden away in some classified vault. They were right there in Volkswagen's own parts catalog, available to anyone who wanted to order them, but almost nobody understood their potential. The 44 heads had been designed for certain industrial and commercial applications, where VW needed a bit more power and torque from their air-cooled engines. Maybe for generators, maybe for certain vehicles sold in specific markets. The exact origin gets a bit murky, but what matters is that these heads existed, they were real VW parts, and they flowed significantly better than standard Beetle heads. Our engineer started testing these heads, measuring their flow on a flow bench. Understanding exactly how much more air and fuel mixture they could move through the engine. But heads alone don't make 200 horsepower. You need the whole package to work together and this is where the real genius comes in. He started looking at crankshafts and he found that VW had produced different stroke crankshafts for different applications. The stroke is the distance the piston travels up and down in the cylinder and changing this changes your engine's displacement. He found that Volkswagen had made stroker cranks for larger displacement engines, again for commercial applications, buses, things like that. Then there were the pistons and cylinders. VW had produced different bore sizes over the years, with the cylinder barrels being available in different diameters to suit different displacements. Our engineer realized he could combine a longer stroke crankshaft with larger bore cylinders and pistons to create a significantly larger displacement than a stock Beetle engine. We're talking about going from the typical 1,600 cc of a late model Beetle to potentially 1,900 cc, 2,000 cc, or even larger, all using genuine Volkswagen parts. The camshaft was another piece of the puzzle. Volkswagen had produced different camshaft profiles for different applications, and some of these cams had more aggressive profiles than others, with longer duration and more valve lift. These weren't wild racing cams, they were production parts, but they were designed for applications where VW needed more power. Our engineer studied these cam profiles, figured out which ones would work best with his larger displacement, better flowing heads, and started putting together a combination. The intake system needed attention too. The stock single carburetor setup was never going to feed enough air and fuel to make serious power. But again, VW had solutions in their own parts catalog. They had produced dual carburetor setups, individual carburetor manifolds for each cylinder pair, and various carburetor sizes for different applications. Our engineer wasn't just slapping on bigger carbs though. He was calculating the airflow requirements of his larger displacement engine, matching carburetor size to the engine's needs, ensuring that the fuel delivery system could support the power he was planning to make. Now here's where it gets really technical and I think this is important to understand because it shows just how thorough this guy was. He didn't just bolt parts together and hope for the best. He understood the thermodynamics of the air-cooled engine, the cooling requirements, the heat dissipation needs. A 200 horsepower air-cooled VW engine is going to generate significantly more heat than a stock 60 horsepower Beetle motor. And if you can't manage that heat, your engine is going to destroy itself. So he looked at the cooling system. The stock fan and shroud setup was designed for stock power levels. He found that VW had produced larger fans, more efficient shroud designs, better ducting components for different applications. He engineered a cooling system that could keep his high output engine at safe operating temperatures. He paid attention to oil cooling too, making sure the engine had adequate oil capacity and cooling to prevent bearing failure and other heat-related issues. The exhaust system was another area where VW's own parts catalog provided solutions. The company had produced less restrictive exhaust manifolds and various exhaust system components over the years. Our engineer selected exhaust components that would allow the engine to breathe out as efficiently as it was breathing in, understanding that you need good exhaust scavenging to make power, especially with a naturally aspirated engine. Let's talk about the ignition system for a moment, because this is crucial to making reliable power. Volkswagen had evolved their ignition systems over the decades, from points to electronic ignition, and various distributors with different advanced curves. Our engineer selected an ignition system that could properly time the spark for his higher compression, larger displacement engine. The timing curve had to be right or the engine would either lose power or destroy itself through detonation. 
The compression ratio is another critical element. By selecting the right combination of pistons, cylinder heads, and deck height, he could control the compression ratio of the engine. Too low and you're leaving power on the table. Too high and you risk detonation, especially with the fuel quality available. He found the sweet spot where he could make maximum power while maintaining reliability and the ability to run on pump gas. What's absolutely mind-blowing about this whole thing is that he was doing this by essentially shopping from Volkswagen's own parts catalog. He wasn't having custom parts machined. He wasn't using aftermarket components from specialty racing suppliers. He was using parts that Volkswagen themselves had designed and produced, parts that were sitting in warehouses and dealer shelves, waiting for someone smart enough to realize that they could be combined into something much greater than the sum of their parts. The results were spectacular. When he finally put it all together and got his engine on a dynamometer, the numbers were shocking. 200 horsepower naturally aspirated from an air-cooled Volkswagen flat-4 engine. To put that in perspective, that's more than three times the power of a stock Beetle engine. That's sports car power from an engine that most people dismissed as a quirky, underpowered relic. But here's the thing that really makes this story special. It wasn't just about the peak horsepower number. The engine was drivable. It made good torque throughout the rev range. It could be tuned to run on pump gas. It didn't require constant maintenance or rebuilds like some high-strung race engines. This was a usable, reliable 200 horsepower from an engine architecture that Volkswagen themselves probably never imagined could produce such numbers. Word started spreading through the Mexican VW scene about what this engineer had accomplished. Other enthusiasts started reaching out, wanting to know the secret, wanting to build their own versions. And here's where the story becomes even more interesting. Our engineer wasn't secretive or protective about what he'd learned. He shared his knowledge, he helped other enthusiasts understand which parts to use, how to combine them, what the critical measurements and specifications were. This started a whole movement in the Mexican VW performance scene. People realized that they didn't need expensive aftermarket parts from the United States or Europe. They had everything they needed right there in Volkswagen's own parts system. It was like discovering that you'd been sitting on a gold mine without realizing it. The parts were affordable, they were readily available, and when combined correctly. They could produce world-class performance. The beauty of this approach extended beyond just the engine itself. Because everything was genuine VW parts, everything fit properly. The mounting points were correct, the cooling system integrated properly, the engine cases didn't need modification. It was a bolt-together package that looked factory but performed like a race engine. You could build one of these engines in a well-equipped home garage with basic tools and the right knowledge. This philosophy spread to other aspects of VW performance in Mexico. People started looking at transmission parts, suspension components, brake systems, realizing that Volkswagen had produced heavy-duty versions of many components for commercial and industrial applications. A whole ecosystem of VW performance developed based on using the factory's own parts in clever combinations. The engine combination our engineer developed became something of a legend in VW circles. People started referring to these builds by various names, and they became the basis for extremely competitive race cars and classes where you had to use factory parts. These engines started showing up in drag racing beetles, in autocross cars, in vehicles competing in various motorsports disciplines where VW had a presence. What makes this story particularly relevant today is what it tells us about the automotive industry and engineering in general. Here we have a major manufacturer, Volkswagen, with all their resources, all their engineers, all their testing facilities, and yet they never explored the full potential of what their own parts could do when combined differently. It took an independent engineer with passion, curiosity, and determination to unlock that potential. It's a reminder that sometimes the big companies are constrained by things other than pure engineering capability. They have to hit price points, they have to meet certain market positioning goals, they have to satisfy regulatory requirements, they have to balance hundreds of different considerations that might prevent them from building the most exciting version of something they're capable of. But the parts and the potential are still there, waiting for someone with the right vision to put them together. This story also highlights the importance of the enthusiast community and how knowledge sharing can transform an entire scene. Our Mexican engineer could have kept his discoveries to himself, could have tried to commercialize them exclusively, but by sharing what he'd learned, he elevated the entire Mexican VW community and created a knowledge base that continues to benefit enthusiasts today. The technical achievement here cannot be overstated. Getting 200 horsepower naturally aspirated from an air-cooled flat-4 is genuinely impressive engineering regardless of the brand or origin of the parts. Modern naturally aspirated engines from major manufacturers, with all their computer-aided design, computational fluid dynamics, and advanced materials, typically make around 100 horsepower per liter. This VW combination was achieving similar specific output figures using 1960s and 70s technology, air cooling, and parts never intended for this application. The fact that these engines could be reliable is perhaps even more impressive than the raw power numbers. 
Anyone can build an engine that makes big power for a few minutes before destroying itself. Building an engine that makes serious power and can do it reliably, that can be driven on the street, that doesn't require constant attention and rebuilding, that's the mark of proper engineering. Our Mexican engineer understood not just how to make power, but how to make power that would last. There's also something beautifully democratic about this whole story. The VW Beetle itself was designed as a people's car, affordable transportation for the masses. In many ways, what this engineer did was democratize VW performance. He showed that you didn't need a fat wallet or access to exotic parts to make serious power. You needed knowledge, you needed patience, you needed the willingness to dig through parts catalogs and understand what you were looking at, but the components themselves were accessible to regular enthusiasts. The Aircool VW engine, despite being out of production for decades now, continues to have an enormous following worldwide. There are still millions of these engines running, still huge communities of enthusiasts maintaining them, modifying them, racing them. The knowledge that this Mexican engineer generated and shared continues to influence how people approach VW performance. His combination of parts has become a blueprint that enthusiasts all over the world reference and build upon. In the broader context of automotive history, stories like this are important because they remind us that innovation doesn't only happen in corporate research and development facilities. Some of the most significant advances in automotive performance have come from independent enthusiasts, small shops, and passionate individuals who refuse to accept conventional wisdom about what was possible. Think about Carroll Shelby taking AC Cobras and Ford V8s and creating legends. Think about the Japanese tuning scene that showed the world what turbocharged four-cylinders could really do. This Mexican engineer and his VW combination belongs in that same tradition. The engineering principles he applied are universal. Understanding airflow, getting the right combination of displacement, compression, and breathing capability, ensuring adequate cooling and lubrication, matching all the components so they work together harmoniously, these are the fundamentals of building any high-performance engine. He just happened to apply them to a platform that most people had written off as having limited potential. What's fascinating is thinking about what other secrets might be hiding in plain sight in other manufacturers' parts catalogs. How many other companies have produced components for various applications over the years that, if combined differently, could produce unexpected if you found this story as fascinating as I do? If you're excited about automotive engineering and the culture of enthusiasts who push boundaries and challenge assumptions, then you absolutely need to subscribe to this channel. We're constantly bringing you stories like this deep dives into automotive history, profiles of incredible engineers and builders, and explorations of car culture from around the world. Hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and join our community of people who believe that cars are more than just transportation, they're expressions of human creativity and engineering excellence. The story of this Mexican engineer and his 200-horsepower VW combination is ultimately a story about human ingenuity about refusing to accept limitations, about the power of knowledge and careful observation. It's about seeing possibilities where others see only parts. It's about understanding that sometimes the best solutions aren't the most obvious ones or the most expensive ones, but the ones that come from deep knowledge and creative thinking. That's a lesson that applies far beyond building engines, but man, it sure does make for one hell of a beetle motor.